DDS, the GT730, 1 GB, DDR3, a legendary bucket, GPU that's worth a really struggling back in 2040, and yet, it's still hanging around 2024. Over time, it the greatest graphic went from being the underdog to completely outclassing this little guy. So, today, we're dusting off the Action Warrior to see if a mix of tweaking, overclocking, and maybe a little of luck can have it survive modern games starting with Fortnite. This is the GT 730s 1GB DDR3, a true blast from the past. First, introduced around mid 2014, it came in several versions built on both 40 nanometers and 28 nanometer processors, technically supporting DirectX 12 with only a features level 11. Depending on models, it could carry on up to very different GPUs. The Fermi based GF108 with 96 CUDA car or the Gapper based GK208 with 384 cores. So, knowing which you have really matters. Some variants use passive coolings, or they have tiny fans and memory options range from 1GB up to 4GB with either DDR3 or GDDR5. The one I got here is the classic 1GB DDR3 Clipper version. And today, we are going to see just how far this old warrior can go when we push it to the limit. For the test, we'll be running the GT730 1GB DDR3 alongside an Intel Core E3-10100F and 16GB of RAM. A setup designed to let the GPU perform an its best and deliver smoother, more stable FPS. The CPU is powerful enough to remote any bottleneck, allowing the GT730 to reach its true limit. To fine-tune performance, we'll be using the MSI Afterburner, a free tool from MSI overclocking and temperature monitoring. And the great thing is, you don't need an MSI branded card, it works flawlessly with Vitry and its GPU. Alright, here's the plan. I'm gonna start by running a few benchmark with everything a stock sitting just to see kinds of baseline we're working with. Then I will give the GT 730s a little kick bumping up both the core clocks and memory clock slightly to see how much extra noise we can squeeze out of it. After that, I will fire up the Heaven benchmark to make sure it's stable and doesn't instantly crash my PC. It also gives us a score so we can track how much performance actually improved. Meanwhile, I will be testing Fortnite side by side to see what kind of FPS we are getting in real gameplay. Once thing looks stable, I will crank it up a bit more until we hit that point where artifacts start popping up, frames start dropping, or the whole thing just give up. Alright, let's start with stock settings. I run the Heaven Band match using DirectX 11 at 1080p, full HD and medium qualities, and the GT730s managed to pull an average of 9.1 FPS with an overall score of 230s. That's our baseline. Not great, but it gives us something to compare after overclocking. Then I jumped into Fortnite on the lowest settings, and the result wasn't much better. The FPS topped out around 30s, which honestly makes the game pretty much unplayable. So, yeah, it's safe to say this card gonna need some serious tricking if you want to get anything close to a smooth experience. Alright, let's start with a light overclock. I bumped the core clock by 140MHz and the memory clock by 115MHz just to see if we can squeeze a little extra life out of the GT730s. Running Heaven Band match again at the same settings. I actually noticed a nice bump in performance. The average FPS went from 9.1 to 10.8, and the score jumped from 230s to 273, rally a 20% improvement. Now, moving on to Fortnite, the frame rate did go up a bit, around 2 or 3 extra FPS, with a max about 16 FPS, but honestly, it's still far from playable. And here's the kickers. Temperatures start creeping close to 80 degrees, which means before the next overclocking round, we definitely need to clean the card and replay thermal paste to keep it cool and stable. Alright, the first overclock wasn't enough to satisfy me, 
So I decided to push things a little further, bumping the core clock by 200 megahertz and the memory clock by 210 megahertz. Running having been match again, the average FPS went up by about 11% and the total score jumped to nearby 30% from 230 to 303. With the real game changers came after a reply fresh thermal pace. Temperature dropped by around 25 to 30 degrees, keeping the GPU stable and running at full speed without throttling. Then I hopped back into Fortnite, and this time the FPS climbed about 3 to 4 frames higher than before, hitting around 19 FPS max and the average roundly 16 FPS. Still not exactly smooth gameplay, but definitely an improvement. The only downside? The term spike way higher during gaming than the benchmark. This little GT 730s was clearly sweating hard to give up. At this point, I feel like we hit a thermal world, everything limited by heat. And honestly, that no surprise in the GT 70 only use passive cooling with no fan at all. So let's put it just a little further, nothing too crazy or this thing might actually melt. This time, I bump in the core clock by 216 MHz while keeping the memory clock at plus 210 MHz. Let's fire up the heaven band at you one more time and see if the final twitch make any noticeable difference. At this point, performance barely moved, less than a 1% gain, which means we have pretty much hit the ceiling for this GPU. The core clock is maxed out, and with that passive hissing and no fans, it is clearly holding its back. Compared to before, Fortnite did get a small boost, going from around 16 FPS up to about 20 FPS, roughly a 25% reward improvement after all the overclocking and cooling tricks. But let's be honest, 20 FPS still isn't anywhere near playable. It's more proof that we officially pushed this tiny GT 730s as far as it possibly go. So, I decided to mess around with Fortnite settings a bit to see if could squeeze out a few extra frames. I switched the rendering mode to DirectX 11 down to Legacy's performance, dropped to 3D resolutions from 66% to 50%. And I turned the anti aliasing down to FXAA. Basically, I threw everything down to the bare medium just to see if this old GT 730s could finally hit something close to playable performance. After optimizing the settings, the difference was insane. The GT 730s was running at around 80 degrees, which is hard but still totally fine for this passive cooler cart. The core clock stay locked at 1150 MHz and the performance absolutely skyrocketed. Before all the Twitch, we were stuck at around 60 to 20 FPS, but now the game was peaking at 100 FPS and averaging a solid 16 FPS. At this point, Fortnite actually feels smooth and totally playable. Sure, the graphics are super low, it looks like something straight out of early 2010s, but the gameplay surprisingly fluid. For a decade owned, fanless GT 730s, this is honestly a huge win. But here the truth, overclocking come with risk. It increased power draw, heat, and stress on the hardware. For a card like GT 730s, which doesn't have fans, it's very easy to overheat and damage component if you go too far. So if you're planning to overclock your old GPU, do it slowly. Monitor temperature closely and make sure your cooling setup can handle it. Sometimes a small gain in performance just isn't worth the risk of frying your cart. That said, it's been fun pushing this relic to its limit, and I hope you enjoyed the right as much as I did. If you like this kind of crazy hardware experiments, don't forget to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe for more GPU madness.